The first hole at Royal North Devon is a fairly innocuous looking par 5 with a generous fairway and is reachable in two shots for the big hitters. However, every shot needs serious attention. A drive pulled left can find the fog rough, which is very difficult to extricate yourself from, and a drive that leaks right will easily find the ditch that runs the entire length of the hole on the right hand side, especially if your ball catches a prevailing wind which blows into and off the left. When laying up for your second shot, it is best to lay up on the left side of the fairway. This is because the ditch that runs up the right hand side cuts across the fairway on a diagonal line short of the green. Hitting up the left side will take this ditch out of play. Your approach to the green again seems simple, however beware the three new pot bunkers on the right hand side. Again it is worth taking note of the wind as this shot can easily come up short as a prevailing wind is hurting. As well as the wind, also take note of where the flag is on the green. This is a very large green and your approach can play up to three clubs different when the pin is at the back or the front. Once you're on the putting surface, it is a fairly flat with no hidden dangers. However, like many greens at Ronoff Devon, you can be on in regulation and still be 100 feet from the hole. You'll soon come to realise how important accurate long putting is when playing here. The second hole at Royal North Devon is one of the toughest on the course. There is a ditch all the way up the right hand side of the fairway that will collect any drive that leaks away and catches a prevailing wind. Like the first hole, the fog rough runs all the way up the left and you will at best only be able to chip out sideways from this unless you catch a lucky lie. The perfect drive will be aimed just to the right of the white stone that you can see on the left hand side of the fairway. At this point it is important to note that any white stone you see on the links denotes a hazard that you can't see. This one marks a ditch which stretches away to its left. Like the first hole, the approach shot to this green will be hurt by the prevailing wind. That, coupled with the fact that this green is slightly elevated, makes the second shot play longer than you think. There are many subtle slopes on the green which need to, a lot of care to be navigated. However, the main difficulty lies if you miss the green. Distance control when playing the shot back onto the green is very tough and most club members will use the putter as it will yield the most consistent results. The third hole R&D generally plays downwind, which for many people brings the two large fairway bunkers into play. These must be avoided at all costs as it is extremely difficult to reach the green out of these bunkers and a simple pitch out can be tough if you are up near the face. A layup short or left of these bunkers is the play and that then leaves you a mid to long iron into the green. Like most of the holes here at Royal North Devon, it is best to err on the side of long when playing your shot into the greens. All of the trouble on this hole is at the front and side of the green, with no trouble at the back, and it is an easy putt from the back of the green which is favourable over a tough bunker shot from a deep pot bunker. This green complex has a large mound in the middle that can cause havoc if you are on the other side of it from the pin, and this can be one of the fastest greens on the course, so distance control is everything. The fourth hole is a magnificent short par 4 with a massive menacing cape bunker right in front of you as you tee off. If you do not clear this from the tee you are in all sorts of trouble as it's 15 to 20 feet deep and the sleepered face can kick your ball backwards or sideways if your ball strikes it. For the medium to long hitters however this bunker poses no real threat and it is possible to drive the screen when the hole is playing downwind. The undulating fairway can throw up some interesting stances and lies, so even though you're hitting a short iron in for your second shot, it is not always easy. As always, avoid the bunkers at the front of the green, as they are deep and steep sided. There are many subtle and not so subtle slopes on this green, so you must take care to read your lines. For many, this hole is a good birdie opportunity, but you can easily three putt this if you are not paying attention. The fifth hole is one of the best short par threes you will find anywhere. The elevated green is guarded on all sides by deep, sheer sided pot bunkers that are extremely difficult to escape from. Playing from a low point to an elevated green makes it very difficult to judge the wind on your tee shot. Once the ball gets above the height of the green it can be hammered by the wind and can get stopped in its tracks. 
Make sure you take note of what the wind is doing before you get to this hole as it can make two to three clubs difference if it's breezy and more if there's a proper wind. There are some severe slopes on the putting surface and if you are past the pin and the greens are quick you can face some terrifying putts. This adds extra importance to knowing your distances and judging the wind on your tee shot. At less than 140 yards in length it may seem an easy par 3 but danger lurks everywhere. The 6 hole. Everyone must stop for a moment on this tee to admire the 360 degree panoramic view of the bay and away up to Exmoor. There really aren't many views that can better it. However, don't let the view distract you too much as the tee shot on this hole is difficult to say the least. There is out of bounds over the fence to the left and a myriad of fairway bunkers to deal with. Knowing your distances off this tee is imperative as there are bunkers to clear as well as lay up short of. This tee shot can require an iron or a full out driver depending on the wind so choose carefully. The approach shot to the two tiered green is uphill so will play longer than you think. Right of this green is a definite no go area. The bank will kick your ball away down the slope and leaves a near impossible up and down. However, if you pull your shot left of the green it should kick back onto it so err to this side. The putting surface slopes from front to back and is quite slow when putting uphill but like glass when putting down the slope, so bear this in mind when putting. So here we have the new 7th hole. This is now the signature par 5 on the front 9 with spectacular views of the estuary and the headland looking over towards Crow Point and Saunton Sands. As a par 5 it is a hole we look to score well on but there is also a lot of danger to be aware of. From the back tees the short bunker is very much in play at the start of the fairway and like all the bunkers on this hole must be avoided as you will struggle to advance the ball more than 40 to 50 yards out of them. The ideal line off the tee is just left of the big bunker on the right hand side of the fairway. A hook left will be swallowed by the great sea rushes or the left hand side fairway bunker, neither of which are desirable. Once in play, the big hitters can try to go for the green in two, avoiding the rushes that are in direct line with the green. Those who lay up have plenty of room to the right hand side of the fairway, but be mindful of the two pot bunkers that are strategically placed. When playing your approach shot to this green, you must make sure you know your yardages as the green is quite narrow front to back and long of the green leaves a very tough up and down. Enjoy the views on this hole but don't let them distract you as there is trouble on every shot. The 8th hole. Breathtaking views can distract the mind on this tee and with the sea so close by crashing against the rocks, you need to focus on the tough task at hand, as this is one of the tougher par threes on the course. With a true prevailing wind, this hole plays down breeze, and quite often you will play the same club as you hit on the fifth hole, which is the first par three on the front nine. Although the fifth is a much shorter hole, it plays into a prevailing wind, with this hole playing downwind usually. So remember your clubbing from earlier. There are hidden pot bunkers left of the screen and there is one back right behind the front bunker that you can see from the tee. A par is always a great score on this hole and will set you up for the difficult run of holes to follow. The newly altered ninth hole is now a very tough par 4, playing as a slight dogleg left and into the prevailing wind. When teeing off, the further right you aim, the more room there is for error. However, this will leave you a longer second shot into a green than a drive played further left but closer to the great sea rushes. If you can, try to draw your approach shot into this green from the right. The green is narrow from front to back and is guarded by mounding and pot bunkers in front and short right of the putting surface. By bringing your approach in from the right hand side you will have a better chance of your ball funnelling onto the green between the mounding, missing the bunkers. 
The green itself is divided into two by a ridge that runs from front to back and if you end up on the opposite portion of the green to where the flag is, you can leave yourself a very difficult sloping fast putt. A par 4 is an excellent score on this hole. The tenth hole. This is the start of the tricky rush holes, the club's very own Amen Corner. If you get through the next three holes unscathed, then you will do well. The tenth is a short but very strategic par four. From the tee, you need to decide how much of the dog leg you're going to bite off. And for the longer hitters, you need to be aware of the rushes on the far side of the fairway, as well as those nearest to you. When you hit near approach to the green, be aware of the bunkers that guard the front and left side of the green, as they are not easily viewable from the fairway. The green on this hole is very flat, but it's generally one of the quickest on the course, so watch your pace control on this green. The 11th hole. Probably the trickiest tee shot on the course this one, as any shot leak left or right will be swallowed by the rushes. However, the further you hit your tee shot down this hole, the more room you will have to play with as the fairway widens out after 200 yards. Once in the fairway, it is unlikely that you will have a flat lie, as this stretch of terrain is full of mogul type humps. This makes the approach a little trickier. However, if you can clear the front bunkers, the ball will kick forward onto the green which has plenty of subtle slopes, so try and maintain your focus when putting. The 12th hole. You have all the room in the world on the right hand side of this hole. However, if you are favouring the right side, away from the rushes on the left, beware of Fowler's bunker that lurks to the right unseen from the tee. Once in play, it is important to avoid the bunkers by the green on the right and the rushes on the left. You must land your ball around 30 yards short of this green to allow it to run up onto the putting surface. Any approach that lands on this green will run off the back as a green slopes from front to back. This is a very large green with not a lot of slope. However, being on it is no guarantee of a two putt as you may still be 60 feet from the cup. The 13th hole. This is one of the shortest par 5 holes you are ever likely to play. However, it is often playing into the prevailing wind. There are bunkers to be aware of on your tee shot and on your approach to the green. However, there is plenty of room to the sides of these bunkers if you are not certain of carrying them. The green complex is what gives this hole its bite. You can be beside this green in 2 and still not be on it in 4. The green sips three to four feet up in the air with steep banking on three sides. You generally need to hit the ball harder than you think to get the ball to run up these slopes, but it's quite easy to overdo this and hit your ball off the other side of the green. Fourteenth hole. The fourteenth is the toughest and longest par three on the course. Generally played with a wind direction into and off the left. It is important to get your clubbing right whilst also factoring in the wind. Bunkers lurk left, right and short of this green and avoiding them is a must as they are small, deep and sheer faced. So take plenty of club, aim for the left middle of the green and allow the wind to bring your ball back to the centre. This green has a spine that runs from front to back and divides it into two portions. If you are on the other side to where the hole is located, it can be a very difficult two putt. However, if you are on the correct side of the green, there are still many of subtle slopes to be aware of. The 15th hole. 
As the stroke index suggests, this is a tough hole and the start of a tough finish to the course. Aim your drive down the left middle of the fairway. This will keep you away from the pit and the sea rushes on the right. This also opens up the approach to the green. The green is guarded on the left and right by a couple of treacherous bunkers and there are also two bunkers about 60 yards short of the putting surface. If your approach clears these two bunkers, your ball should bounce down onto the green, which is fairly flat, but fast. The 16th hole. A short par 3 with a large green, but looks can deceive. There are pot bunkers surrounding this elevated green, and with the wind generally blowing down and over the left shoulder, it can make it a tricky green to hold your ball on. Ideally, your ball would land at the front of the green and bounce up to the hole. As this green is elevated, putting is affected a little more by the breeze. If the pin is located near the edges of the green, be aware, it is quite easy to put your ball off and leave yourself a very tricky chip back on. The 17th hole. A long, tough par 5 for the penultimate hole. Most of the trouble here is around and short of the green. However, keep your drive straight as the rough off the fairway tends to be longer in this part of the course. Your tee shot should be aimed at the tower on the hill. The perfect layup is on the left side of the fairway, short of the road and ditch which guard the front of the green. When playing your approach, it always plays a little longer than the yardage suggests, and as the green slopes from back to front, the ball doesn't bounce forward as much as it does on other holes. This green can be tricky as there are a lot of subtle and not so subtle slopes to navigate. The 18th hole. The home hole at R&D is a tough finishing hole and, as the course was set up originally for match play, has a stroke index of 18. However, this is not an easy hole and is easily in the top six hardest holes on the course. With your drive, stay away from the ditch on the right that separates the first and 18th holes. The burn runs across the front of this green, so your second shot must carry this to find the putting surface. However, as most of the approach shots you will have hit during the previous 17 holes will have needed to land short of the green, you need to know your carry distance for this shot. Anything mishit or underclubbed will find a watery grave. This is another large green with no trouble at the back, so definitely err long with your approach. The two-tier green is generally one of the softest and therefore slowest on the course, and you may need to factor this in when putting.